Uh, you and Oklahoma seems to bring the best down to you. Uh, you know, every time we play them, we, we, you know, I just find a way to, you know, get into the gaps. And, and, and I think the way they guard is, is kind of different, you know, with the smaller guards and us being so big and being able to take advantage of our height and, you know, just able to get downhill really well. All of a sudden, it looks like you're extremely comfortable. Do you feel that way out there? Of course, of course. I've, I've gotten more and more confident over the year and uh, just, just playing with my team and playing for my team and, you know, doing those kind of things kind of got me back into the rhythm of things. And now, you know, we're looking great. How about Big Zach? What do you think his performance? Oh, great, great. I mean, to be a freshman to be asked to come into the game and an atmosphere like this and he stepped up to the play with confidence knocking down a huge three that we needed getting rebounds he did everything that we needed uh, your, your team is interesting because so many guys can dribble drive rebound and push it up the floor uh, you didn't get many fast breaks with the half court you were very good at that end of it yeah i think we're just so versatile you know like with ocb and me being such bigger wings and one being able to pray for us dave being a presence down there i mean we got so many weapons you know it's so hard to guard us especially when we're all clicking and looking for each other it's an easy league really right you don't have to be <laughs> Prepared, do you? Might be the hardest one in the nation. Does Bill have a hard time selling you how tough this is each, each and every day? Yeah, I mean, every night you have to respect your opponent. I mean, no matter if it's the bottom of the league or the top of the league, everyone's gunning for each other. I mean, they just showed today and uh, a couple days ago what they did against Tech. I mean, this team's good, and, you know, this, this whole conference is good. You have to respect every opponent. Thank you. Keep it going. Thank you so Play much. Great. Appreciate it. There are no proverbial layups in the Big 12. And for more, we say hello to our guy Gary Parrish, co-host of the Eye on College Basketball podcast, our hoops writer extraordinaire. Uh, GP, need your general reaction to this one because Kansas comes away with the win and that's all that really matters at the end of the day. We're in that murky no man's land as we head towards March right now. Your reaction to the win and the nature of it is what? Well, if you're Kansas, you're happy to get out of this with a victory, considering your star, Ocharabaji, did not play well. You know, he's been on a, a three-game stretch here where he just has not performed at the level he's been performing at literally since the first night of the season at the Champions Classic. The way he played in November, December, January set him up to be a legitimate National Player of the Year candidate, and he is still that, um, but he has not performed well lately, and he wasn't good in this one, but... You saw Raph there talking to Jalen Wilson, who, you know, has become more consistent. This is a young man who, at the beginning of last season, sort of burst out of nowhere and was really impactful, and then sort of settled into being, you know, as opposed to Kansas's best player, maybe a top three player on the team. He's been up and down this season, never really showing much consistency, but that's two really nice performances from Jalen Wilson. And, you know, if Kansas can, can start to rely on him more, you, you, you typically know what you're going to get from uh, uh, Ochai Abaji. Mm -hmm. You typically know what you're going to get from Christian Brown. If you can get more consistent high-end performances from Jalen Wilson and also David McCormack, well, then this is a Kansas team that can absolutely compete uh, for the national championship. Uh, Gary, you bring up some great points there because Abaji has not been himself 11 points in back-to-back -back contests here. He obviously needs to be better for Kansas to realize their ultimate goal. But what, where do they need to be better as a team? Because right now, uh, forgive me if I'm misrepresenting, but it really seems like Gonzaga, Purdue, a large chasm, and then everybody else. If Kansas wants to elevate to that level, where do they need to be better as a team? Defensively, you know, th this isn't the worst defensive team Bill Self has ever coached at, at Kansas, but it is, it is among the worst. They've been better lately, but they're still outside of the top 30 in adjusted defensive efficiency, according to Ken Palm. Now, again, you know, when you're uh, nitpicking Kansas, um, there, there's, there are fewer things to, to pick at than there are with most programs. Like, KU's problems are always smaller than just about everybody else's problems. This is one of the consistently great programs in the country. But they're not a very good defensive team. And um, that's why what happened in the final 10 minutes today, I think, can be encouraging if you're Bill Self, if you're a KU fan, because Oklahoma was in control of this game. Mm -hmm. You know, the Sooners were up five with about 10 minutes to play. And then they did not score for nearly seven minutes. Kansas went on an 11 0 run. And that's when KU took the lead that it never relinquished. And so if I'm Bill Self, I'm in that locker room. I'm happy I got out of this without Abaji being great. But also, you know, we held a Big 12 opponent scoreless for nearly seven full minutes. That's not something Kansas has been doing often this season. The defense. Um, allowed them to win this game in these final 10 minutes. No easy Saturdays in this conference that will be well represented when it does come to tournament time. Uh, plenty of action across the slate already early on Saturday. GP taking a look at a couple results. Auburn back in the win column. Baylor 17-point win over Texas. What really jumps off the board at you? 
Well, Auburn bounced back after that loss to Arkansas and, and looked really good against Texas A&M. Jumped out early and controlled that game from start to finish. There is a case, Joe, to leave Auburn at number one in the AP poll, okay. given the body of work is super-duper impressive. But I, I do think if Gonzaga uh, handles St. Mary's tonight, uh, and by handle I mean just wins the game, uh, Gonzaga will move to number one in the AP poll on Monday. The Zags you know, are winning their West Coast Conference games by an average of more than 30 points. They've won five straight games by 30 points. Their computer numbers are so much better than everybody else's that if they win tonight, I do believe Gonzaga will be number one in the AP poll. But if they were to lose, and St. Mary's is good, then I think Auburn probably stays at number one despite losing earlier this week. Um, in the Big 12, there was another interesting result. You showed it there in the graphic. Baylor um, beat the Texas by double digits. And that was super impressive given that Baylor once again was playing without LJ Cryer, but it could be a win that comes with a loss because Jonathan Chamuachachua, a very important rotation player on last season's national championship team and on this season's national championship contender, he went down with what Baylor is calling a severe knee injury in the game. And anytime um, Baylor or any school is going to describe something that way so quickly, and you see it there, it's just awful. Um, you know, it, it would be shocking at this point if we hear anything other than really bad news connected to Jonathan Chamuachachua. I'm not going to diagnose him mm -hmm. um, from uh, a studio. I'll let the doctors do that, but you saw it with your own eyes. It, it obviously did not look good. Yeah, non-contact in nature as well. A big blow in that one. Uh, Gary Parrish keeping us up to the minute on all the latest across college hoops. We thank you, GP. And there's only one place to be as college basketball season comes into full swing and we make our way towards March. It's the Eye on College Basketball podcast. Gary Parrish, Matt Norlander breaking it down each and every day. All the latest breaking news and notes that you need. Download, subscribe, and enjoy the Eye on College Basketball podcast. And don't forget, more action coming your way on CBS. Maryland taking on number three, Purdue. Uh, that ranking could likely change depending on the outcome of that one as well as the Boilermakers continue to stack up impressive wins. You'll get to see a real good brand of basketball on CBS at 1 Eastern. Do you want a sports network that delivers everything that matters about the game? The highlights, the picks, the instant analysis, no yelling, no fake debates, no politics. Hit the subscribe button and never miss a moment.